classical electromagnetic wave theory. An electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave consisting of oscillating electric and magnetic fields at right angles to each other. These fields are perpendicular to the direction the wave moves. Electromagnetic waves are distinguished by their differences in frequency and wavelength. In visible light, these differences in frequency and wavelength account for different colors. The difference in frequencies and wavelength also distinguishes visible light from invisible electromagnetic radiation such as x-rays. In order to find the speed of light, you multiply the frequency times the wavelength. Consider an ocean wave coming toward the shore. The broad crest of the wave that is perpendicular to the wave's motion consists of a line of water particles. Similarly, another line of water particles forms a low-lying trough in the wave, and still another line of particles forms another crest. In any type of wave, these lines of particles are called wave fronts. All the points on the wave front of a plane can be treated as point sources. A few of these points are shown in the initial wave front in the picture. Each of these point sources produces a circular or spherical secondary wave or wavelet. The line that is tangent to each of these wavelets at some later time determines the new position of the initial wave front. This approach to analyzing waves is called Huygens principle, named after the physicist Christian Huygens, who developed it. Huygens principle can be used to derive the properties of any wave, including light that interacts with matter, but, it's, but the same results can be obtained by treating the propagating wave as a straight line perpendicular to the wave front. This line is called a ray, and the simplification is called the ray approximation. Red, green, and blue are known as the additive primary colors because when added in, var in varying proportions, they can form all the colors of the spectrum. When all three additive primary colors are added together, white light is produced. This picture shows white light being passed through red, green, and blue filters. The lights are reflected off a curved mirror and combined again to form white light. When you shine a white light through red gummy bears, the gummy bears absorb all the colors except red and reflect red light. When you shine the white light through green gummy bears instead, the gummy bears absorb all the colors except green and reflect green light. When you shine a red laser through red gummy bears, the red laser is able to travel all the way through the gummy bears because the red light is not absorbed. When you shine the same red light through green gummy bears, it is unable to make it through even the first gummy bear because the red light is absorbed by the green. By lining up gummy worms, you will be able to see how white light is created from other colors. As you shine the white light through the white gummy worm, you will be able to see that white light is reflected because of no colors are absorbed and all colors are reflected. As you move the white light down the gum red gummy worm, you will see the light change to a reddish color because the red light is being reflected while all other colors are being absorbed. As the white light continues on the path of gummy worms to the yellow and green gummy worm, yellow and green light is reflected because the colors being absorbed have changed and yellow and green are now being reflected instead of red. As the light travels back to another red gummy worm, the light reflected once again becomes red because the red light is no longer being absorbed by the gummy worm. When you fill a bottle with water and put a hole in the bottle, the pressure of the water will push the water out of the hole. If you shine a laser through the bottle directly in line with the hole, the light of the laser will bend with the water. In the dark, you can more easily see the white light bending with the water that is being squirted out of the bottle into her hand. You can.
concave mirrors bend inward like a cave. These mirrors reflect light rays inward towards the center focal point. In this picture, you can see the incoming light rays represented by the blue lines being reflected off the concave mirror and the reflected lights are represented by the purple lines. These reflected light rays meet in a center focal point. This is a real life example of incoming rays being reflected off a concave mirror. In the picture, you can see how all the incoming rays are reflected and then meet in a center focal point before fanning out once again. The mirror of an optical telescope reflects waves of visible light to form an image at the eyepiece. The visible light and radio waves are forms of electromagnetic radiation and reflect from certain materials. Telescope mirrors are always concave rather than flat or con convex. The reason why Sydney can see the back of her head is because the reflected light bounces from mirror to mirror to her eyes. <laughs> you can see multiple images of the egg because mirrors are almost perfect reflectors and reflect nearly almost all the light. As you look farther down, the egg gets a little bit darker because some of the light is absorbed. Images in a mirror have right to left reversal, which means that the right side of this watch is the image's left side. The numbers on the watch are turned around and the hands point in the opposite direction. Because of right to left reversal, you can't read the word physics in a mirror because it's backwards. The angle of incidence is the angle between a ray that strikes a surface and the normal to that surface at the point of contact. The angle of reflection is the angle formed by the line normal to a surface and the direction in which the reflected ray moves. If a straight line is drawn perpendicular to the reflecting surface at the point where the incoming ray strikes the surface, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection can be defined with respect to the line. Careful measurements of the incident and reflected angles, orange and green, respectively, reveal that angles are equal. As you can see, each incoming beam of light that hits the mirror has the same angle of reflected light. shine a red laser at a mirror, it also reflects onto the wall. This is because the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. You can see this by clapping chalk dust over where the laser is being pointed, and you'll be able to see the red laser through the air and creating equal angles. The reason why the strobe light is so bright when it flashes is because the white light flashes off the concave and flat mirrors. You can see the light being reflected better in the dark. A microwave oven runs when the electromagnetic waves have a wavelength between 30 centimeters and 1 millimeter and a frequency between 1 billion and 300 billion hertz. So that's how we are able to make popcorn. <laughs> when reading a book next to a lamp, the closer you are to the lamp, the easier it is to read the book. This is because the light is concentrated in a small area. The further you get from the lamp, the darker the light source is because it has spread out over a larger area. Because of the way the light reflects off the flat mirrors in our car, we are able to see what's coming up from behind us and to the side of us. frequency is less than 1 billion HZ. I can jam out to some music. <laughs>